Hello, this is Talking Europe on France 24. I'm Catherine Nicholson, today with you from the Hungarian Embassy in Paris, where I'm pleased to be meeting the Foreign Minister of Hungary, Peter Siato. Thanks for being with us. Thank you very much for the invitation. Happy to be here. I'd like to start off, uh, first of all, with something that concerns all of us, the COVID pandemic. Uh, in Hungary, uh, the death toll has been particularly high per capita, one of the highest in the world at this point. Um, why is it so high, to your knowledge, and, and what's the government doing about it? Look, we have uh, put uh, all our eggs in one basket, if I may say that, so we concentrate on the vaccination, since we understand that vaccination is the only real uh, solution. We have never made uh, any issue of ideology or political approach uh, in this regard. So uh, apart from the uh, so-called Western types of vaccines, uh, we have approved the use of uh, both Sputnik and Sinopharm in Hungary, which helped us to curve down uh, the death toll at the beginning. And uh, we were the first country in the EU to reach the 60% uh, vaccination rate, which was very important from the perspective of releasing the uh, restrictive uh, measures. Uh, what we um, really take care about is the number of uh, patients in hospitals, especially in the intensive care units. So far, we can say that um, the load of the uh, healthcare system is well below the capacity. And as far as this is the case, um, um, we have to maintain uh, that uh, situation. Some other news uh, in Hungary, an election due in the spring, and there's been a lot of uh, election talk recently, election rallies by your Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, also by the opposition, who have now named an, a one united opposition candidate, Peter Marki Zoy, mayor of Hodmezovasha, hey, a mm, town nice in pronunciation, southern by the way. Hungary. <laughs> Congratulations. Opinion polls suggest that uh, Mr. Marki Zoy, uh, Zoy could win the election. What do you make of those polls? The picture is very clear because on one side you have the uh, ruling party uh, which embodies everything which has been happening since 2010 and on the other hand you have everybody collected who has to do something to be done with what happened before 2010. Before 2010 uh, the country was in a very bad economic shape, very high unemployment rate, uh, very high uh, taxes, uh, uh, hospitals uh, closing. Since 2010, we are among the uh, countries in Europe which have the, um, the quickest growing economy. So, so people... you think that your record will yeah. convince voters? Uh, absolutely. People have a clear uh, choice uh, whether to uh, stay on the, um, on the route from 2010 or to go back to the time before 2010. So people have a clear choice. And we, we are very self-confident in this regard. It is interesting. Mr. Marquisoy is a conservative, practicing Christian. Uh, many of the values that Fidesz talks about. He used to be a Fidesz voter. He uh, thinks he can convince Fidesz voters to vote for him. Well, uh, we, do, we don't know what kind of water he was, because uh, we have no evidence uh, on whom he, he voted. No one knows that, because you know, you go into the words. Yeah, OK, well, we don't know whether we can believe him. But what we know is that um, you know, in Hungary, the political system is parliament based, parties based, so you need to have a party structure in order to become a prime minister because it's not the population, it's not the people to elect the prime minister, it's the parliament to elect the prime minister, so it's up to the parties uh, who's going to be the, uh, the, the, uh, the prime minister and the leftist parties are ruled by a former prime minister called Ferenc Gyurcsány, so uh, if it is the opposition parties to win, then it's uh, uh, up to Ferenc Gyurcsány to decide who's going to be the prime minister, hopefully we'll not get there, let's put it this way. <laughs> Well, let's uh, look at some European affairs, obviously part of your portfolio as foreign minister. Uh, your government's plan for a, about a 7 billion euro share of the EU COVID recovery fund has not yet been approved by the European Commission. Do you have an update on its progress for us? Yeah, actually, it's a clearly a political process. Uh, there have been some preconditions put forward by the European Commission, some new one. You know, you have to know that uh, before our law on the protection of children was passed by the Parliament, we were about to agree. Ursula von der Leyen has already asked for an appointment in Budapest to announce uh, the uh, agreement about the recovery fund. But afterwards, the Parliament has passed this law on the protection of the children. And now the European uh, Commission wants us to withdraw this law putting it as a precondition to get the money from the, from the fund, which is unacceptable, absolutely unacceptable for us. We, we reject any kind of blackmailing in this regard. We went on the bond market. We collected 4.2 uh, billion euros. We can start all the projects which we would have started uh, 
financed by this fund. So we, we reject any kind of blackmailing in this regard. So, uh, just to explain to our viewers about how this all works with the recovery fund, all member states had to put forward plans for their share of the recovery money. It included a, about 11 criteria that were the same across the member states. Uh, one of them, Mr. Ciate, was about preventing, detecting and correcting corruption, fraud and conflicts of interest in how EU funds are used. Yeah. The same across all member states. Um, that is one specific area where the Commission is asking Hungary to table robust guarantees. Since, as you say, this is EU taxpayer cash, Hungarian money partly. You agree there should be yeah, safeguards but, on this? Yeah, but, but here I think it's an artificial precondition because we have already fulfilled uh, all the demands uh, of, the, of the European uh, Commission. We have uh, all the necessary measures uh, in place. If there was a systematic corruption, country would not be successful, especially economy would not be successful. So, you know, when the European, if the European Commission does not want to give you money, they put forward uh, some kind of, you know, perceptions, uh, which are very, very complicated uh, to address. So regarding concrete issues, we were always ready for dialogue and discussion. They can be sure that our measures, uh, our institutions against corruption are strong uh, enough. Their real precondition is that they want us to allow the LGBTI organizations to go into the kindergartens and the schools to conduct the sexual education of our children, which we will never allow uh, to do so. Well, so I don't think that we can agree on that, unfortunately. Let's talk about that. It's something I'm sure it's interesting for our viewers. There's been a lot of discussion mm -hmm. this year of this uh, Children Protection Act, as it's known. Now, the stated aim is safeguarding children's well-being and fighting paedophilia, I'm sure. Everyone would agree with those things. Within the law, though, there is a part of it that prohibits the portrayal of homosexuality in settings, including schools. Just to understand, on a basic level, are you saying with this law that paedophilia and homosexuality are the same thing? No, this law doesn't say that. So if uh, one reads the law, which is very rare, I understand, so uh, most of the criticism on this law was put... Which is why I looked into without, the detail. With, without, without reading, but uh, respect to you that at least you had some, um, some um, uh, reading uh, exercise uh, before our interview. So this law consists of two parts, and they are not confused. One part of the law is against pedophilia, and the other uh, part of the law is about ensuring the exclusive rights of the parents mm -hmm. to conduct the education of their children on sexual orientation. So this, what the law says, that this kind of education is an exclusive right of the parents. Because so we stick the to the fact that we know our sure. kids the most and sure. the best, you know. I'm sure many parents agree, but just to help me understand, the law's name is Children Protection Act. Um, part of it, as I said, prohibits the portrayal yeah. of homosexuality. Um, do children need to be protected from knowing what homosexuality is? Look, uh, we have to leave it to the parents uh, to, um, to let them know about uh, such kind of things regarding sexual orientation because all, children's are all children are different. Uh, it is the parents who can judge the best. We have prohibited three things. Uh, to be portrayed to children. And I want to underline to children. This is direct pornographic content, um, the promotion of homosexuality, and promotion of gender change. Do you understand and, why and people will be confused the... about the, the mixing of these things at the same time? Homosexuality, no. paedophilia, which is a, a no, crime. No, but, yeah, but, but you know, the, uh, you, you have, it's a matter of technicality. This is not a, a separate law. This law has been put together by modification of different laws, you know? We will not find one chapter where these two words uh, would occur so together. Stand by yeah. the law. Yeah. Just one other brief uh, issue that's very important uh, in terms of media freedom, much discussed in terms of Hungary. Uh, now, the Council of Europe's Commissioner for Human Rights has criticised a lack of media freedom in Hungary, Dunja Mijatovic. Now, she herself uh, is Bosnian. This is not an EU body. Uh, the hung Hungarian government is currently holding the presidency of this body, the Council of Europe. Um, is this kind of comment worth listening to? Look, my problem is that those who put forward such kind of criticism do not speak Hungarian. If they spoke Hungarian, and if they understood Hungarian, they would never make such kind of statements. But because you, if you understand very well that at the Council of Europe there are well, people working for the Council I, I of know, Europe but, who but, speak Hungarian but, but, who are advising yeah, but and it's simply, creating these reports. It's simply not true and not fair uh, what Mrs. Miatovic has said. Because you cannot, name, you cannot name any sectors of Hungarian media where the market leader would be a pro-government media. 
all market leaders are heavily against the government. It's not just about the actual companies, though. Uh, for example, the Hungarian Media Council, which is responsible for ensuring the proper functioning of uh, democratic freedoms in Hungarian media, um, uh, all of the members of that were appointed by your party, Fidesz. No, but actually the law These says... These are political appointees the, the, the law says overseeing the, media freedom. The law says that the members of this council must be appointed and elected by the parliament by a two-third majority. So I think this is a dem democratic guarantee. If, for example, after the next election, Fidesz is in a minority in the parliament, if this Hungarian Media Council was political appointees that were not in favour of Fidesz, you would accept that they might make decisions? It's up to the parliament to decide, and everybody has to accept that. Everybody. A word about um, the Pegasus spyware, this uh, story that broke in the summer. Uh, a group of investigative journalists with Amnesty International, uh, they found that a spyware called Pegasus, developed by Israel's NSO, had been illegally used to, to spy on private telephones around the world, including many EU citizens, President Macron, for example. Also, uh, in Hungary, um, several lawyers, investigative journalists, and one opposition politician. I know in the summer that you, Peter Siato, said that your government has no knowledge of this type of data collection. But three months on, can you categorically say it was definitely not used, or are you still not sure? Well, first of all, uh, we reject that uh, any Hungarian secret service uh, uh, would have acted uh, against the law and would have been involved in any kind of illegal activities. That used to be the case before 2010, when the socialists were in power. Since we have taken office, no secret service in Hungary has been involved in any illegal activities. So these people now, were spied on, though? Yeah. Is that but, Do you know I mean, who I, I don't know about that. Why should I know? There's and how, evidence how should on I the know? telephones. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, I, I, I can tell you one thing for sure. Nobody will be bugged because of his or her profession. Nobody. There are other reasons uh, for what secret services might apply um, lawful, lawful uh, applications. Uh, and well, these methods, lawyers and journalists had no other know, charges but, against them. Uh, there were no, some individuals well, with security yeah. issues. These so particular once, people, once again, no formal I'm a, charges. I'm a politician. I'm a politician. I'm definitely not, not involved in such kind of decisions. So it would be very weird if I knew about uh, any kind of decisions uh, like that. So, but once again, I want to underline. I have to tell you that no one is being bugged or looked after in Hungary because of profession. I understand that sci-fi things but are exciting. Are Hungarian but state agencies using Pegas Pegasus spyware? NSO says it only sells to governments and state authorities. Yeah, what I know is that uh, I supervise one part of the security services in Hungary and that one has not used it. Are you investigating whether other security services have used it? Uh, I don't know about these kind of investigations. Peter Ziato, thank you for speaking to us on France 24. Thank you very much.